every day I look at the news and I, really, I, I mean, these evangelists, they must be punch drunk by now. They must be <laughs> the rope dope George Foreman battering Muhammad Ali. But I'll tell you what, they <laughs> EVs won't be recovering and winning like Ali did. There's just no there's just no recovering from this. My phone. While I was in Sorrento last week, my phone before I'd finished breakfast was down to 85%, 80%, and I was having to recharge it all the time. I had to have a power pack with me. The, the battery was just going completely. I couldn't stop it. I, although it's showing 89% um, battery efficiency, the, it was just going and running out and it was on red before you knew it. And I was finding it very difficult to, to actually function with my mobile while I was in Sorrento. It was really hot. The Telegraph. Electric car range almost halves in heat waves. Story by Gareth Caulfield. The distance electric cars can travel almost halves in heat waves, researchers revealed. The ranges of three common electric vehicles, EVs, became significantly shorter when they were tested in Spain. In, in very... Honestly, the reporting and the... I know I'm terrible. <laughs> I can hardly read to start off with. I'm dyslexic. It's a struggle to read. I'm not, not fully dyslexic, semi-dyslexic. It's a struggle to read. Um, I have like a superpower where I, I register like Jason Bourne, but in a bad way. Every car that comes towards me if there is a group of letters and my brain can make up a word, no matter how it comes, I see the word. I, it, this superpower of making personalised plates out, out of nothing. But these people get paid for doing this. The ranges of three common electric vehicles, EVs, became significantly shorter when they were tested in Spain in very hyphen temperatures. Now, you can see what they did there, can't you? He'll have done it on his dictaphone, sent it off for somebody to type it out in very high temperatures. Come again. Very hyphen temperatures. What car magazine went to what it described as the frame pan of Andalusia over the summer, testing the EVs in the soaring temperatures of Seville, Cordoba and Montoro. Now, in Sorrento last month, it was 42 degrees. Its testers, its testers drove a Citroen EC3 Max, a Kia EV3 Long Range GT Line S, and a Tesla Model 3 Long Range from Seville in the country's south to the Mediterranean coastal town of Aguadulce, a journey of about 250 miles, 400 kilometers. Temperatures during the drive ranged between 32 degrees centigrade and 44. The Tesla Model 3 was the worst performing vehicle as it managed 244 miles, 44% below its 436 mile official range. The Citroen managed 142 miles before needing to be recharged, which is 29% short of its official range figures of 199 miles. The EV3 managed 246 miles, just under a third, 32% less than its stated 362 miles. The findings will fuel fresh claims about range anxiety, even though petrol cars typically see a range reduction of around 25% under similar conditions. Well, I don't believe that at all. I, but I would like to know, did they have the windows open? Did they have the aircon on? Um, you know, we, if this is going to be like a scientific study, we need to know, did they do like Jeremy Clarkson did? He didn't have the heater on, he didn't have the radio, he didn't have the... You know, that's standard. Don't put anything on. Because I don't think... I, ice engines work better when it's cold because cold air is more dense 
than hot air. So therefore, you get a better combustion mix. Electric vehicles, what could be the difference? Do things expand? Is there more resistance? When it's hot, Will Nightingale, the magazine's review editor, said the range findings were more than double the discrepancy seen in the 2024 Watt Car Summer Range Test. He concluded, our extreme temperature test shows that range and efficiency plummet in very hot conditions. Official figures for how many miles an electric car can drive after one charge are based on a standardised test carried out in relatively benign conditions. This is known as the WLTP test, the Worldwide Harmonised Light Vehicle Test Procedure. Car makers are legally obliged to publish this figure whenever they advertise a new car. It comes as telegraph analysis of official figures has found English people walk further than ever amid soaring driving costs. I don't think that's the case. I think, like me, they probably want to keep fit, but, you know, you put what you want. The average English person travelled about 10% further on foot and a third further by train in 2024 than they did 20 years ago. Meanwhile, over the past decade alone, the English reduced the distance they drive every year by about 10%, down from 5,057 miles per year in 2015 to 4,621 miles in 2024. That's probably because um, people work from home now, isn't it? The drop in distance driven accelerated over the COVID-19 pandemic years, with English drivers never having averaged more than 5,000 miles a year behind the wheel since 2020. Edmund King, president of the AA, said that some motorists are feeling priced out of their cars thanks to taxes, rising fuel prices and measures such as Sadiq Khan's London Ulez. Cars still account for, cars still account for 76% of all miles travelled by those living in England last year, however. Walking is great for fitness if it's done by choice, but not so good for those who can't afford other forms of transport. I would say it's exactly the same. Uh, and people who can't afford transport get exactly the same benefit. Um, and probably, there's a, there's a guy here who lives in the apartments. He cycles to work every day, even when it's snowing, he cycles to work. He's as, he's as fit as a butcher's dog. And I would imagine he's got a good job. So he can afford to go in the car. He does it for his health. This particularly affects around 40% of households in the lowest income quintile who have no access to a car compared to 14% in the highest income quintile. Others have taken to walking more for community or shopping trips as part of fitness trends to get their steps up whilst being monitored by their fitness devices, he added. I do the same. If I can walk, I do. That's what I do now. When I had a Range Rover, I tried not to use it as much, and I didn't use it as much. For going to town, the park next to me, I walk through the park and I'm in town. <sighs> I did put a bit of weight on while I was in Sorrento, and I walked 18,000 steps a day on average. So, don't always work for you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Ta-da.